another you open another internet tab you open facebook oh i can't do that on my phone oh I was told. it's only your phone okay you need a big what would you do deb tell me how to do it because i don't even know how to do a split screen okay if you've got a laptop with a big screen you just open up a separate tab so you yeah. keep room open you open a separate tab open up facebook and then pull up the picture and that's it and it does it but you've got to have two tabs open in the internet yeah. okay yep so now i got the picture open it's kind of cool that is really good because you'll have it right there right that's I do better i do better with visual i don't know about you guys yeah i'm a visual person too so okay so we're gonna um get started oh my goodness you know what i almost did <laughs> You know, I wear so many different hats that sometimes I forget who the heck I am. I was just going to say, so we'll open in prayer and then we'll start. <laughs> Oy I'm telling you. Well, we can do that too. I'm getting confused in my old age, girls, you know. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do. <laughs> I crack me up. Um, okay. <laughs> We're going to um, start, we're going to work with two shades of blue. We're going to do the background first. So what I'd like you to do um, is to, now you first make a decision if you want it to be landscape or um, portrait style, depending on what size canvas or what size um, um trace pad you're using, whatever you're using, piece of wood, whatever, you have to make a decision if it's going to look nicer this way or this way. I was just trying it out before you all arrived, Margaret was on, and I'm choosing to do it landscape. And I did cut out the traceables in dark, so you'll be able to see them if you needed them. They're very simple to draw, so you don't really need them. But what you're going to do is you'll if you want to make a decision, if you want it landscaped or portrait, if you've cut your birds out, you can just put them on and see how it looks good, how it looks in the landscape or in the portrait. If you like it better, of course, there'll be less room or you would like it. So you make that decision and then we'll start doing the background. So I've chosen that I'm going to do mine landscape what if you couldn't cut the birds out <laughs> well you can just draw them there's when i draw them on here i'll hold it up and you can take a close look at it, or you can look at the picture you've got these are very 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 simple birds to draw it's just like a i'll show you as we do it i'm gonna let's, try winging it Let's work on the background. So we're going to take some dark blue and we're going to put a little bit on our tray. We don't need a whole lot, depending on the size of your canvas or pad that you're working with. So I don't want a whole lot on mine. And then if you have a light blue, you can put it in there. If you don't have a light blue, you're going to create a light blue with a drop of this dark blue and a blob of white. So does, do you all have light blue or not? Yes. yes. Okay. Then we don't have to worry about creating the color. So I, let me just grab a light blue because I didn't bring one out because I thought I was going to mix. Okay. I got mine. My good old craft dressing jar. <laughs> bottle not jar okay so i'm going to put that light blue right next to it so i have done this so i've got the light blue and the dark blue next to each other i do not have a lot that's just running there if you brought a sponge do you have a sponge there's a few things you can do for your background and um you can use a sponge you can use a brush that's not a problem you can use bubble wrap 
Ah. Bubble wrap works. And if you ever order from Amazon or any place like that, they always come with bubble wrap. In fact, the envelope themselves, when things come from Amazon, the inside the envelope is bubble wrap. So I usually rip open the envelope and then I just keep parts of it so I can use it for painting. So you can also use that if you want it to have a bit of a texture in the background. Um, maybe I'll use that and show you how it looks. So I've just crunched it up in my hand. You can use your sponge now. And if you don't have a sponge, just use your brush. So we're going to start with the outside edges. And we're going to do those outside edges in the darker blue. So all I want you to do right now is just kind of dab some on each edge. And then you can start to work it with whatever you're using. If it's a sponge, you can tap. If it's bubble wrap, you can tap. Do you see what's happening there with the bubbles? So it gives it a little bit of a cool texture. So you can do whatever. If you've got bubble wrap, your sponge is just fine. And you're going to go along mostly all around the edges first. We're going to try to get those edges all the way. And I'm just putting a little bit more on my bubble wrap and I'm going all around going in somewhat of a circle so if you've got a sponge that you're using go around in, in a circular motion as you're putting it on because you really don't want it to have streaks like a brush would leave you want it to be a, like like up and back side to side or up and down you want it to be a little bit more circular so you see what I'm doing here? I'm putting this paint on in a circular motion, just going from the edges and going around like that. We're going to leave the center. We're not going to get to that center yet. You're just going to keep dabbing on your darker bloom. center open a bit <clears throat> once you've got your outside the way you think you want it to look Everybody's going to look different because some are use some of you are using a brush, some are using a sponge, and I'm using bubble wrap. So it's all going to look different, and that's what's good about all of this. Now I'm going to put some of the light blue on whatever it was I was using. So I've got the light blue on my bubble wrap. You're going to put the light blue on whatever it is, if it's a sponge or a brush. And we're going to put that light blue now all around in the center. We're just going to dab it in, and then we're going to add some other color later. So let's let's blend. When we get to the edge of the dark blue, blend some of this light blue into it so it's not just like a huge light blue blob in the middle. You want to blend these colors together. working out <laughs> yeah really we'll have nice <laughs> muscles when we're done <laughs> and everybody's will look a little different Now, as I'm putting this light blue, I'm just putting a drop of the dark blue on my 
bubble wrap and blending it a little bit in with this light blue. So I have Noisy, huh? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Once you've got your background, we're going to do these other colors. Um, you know, I think we could probably splatter some of those other colors on if we wanted to now. Right now? Um, I'm trying to think if we should do it now or later. Does it have to dry? Yeah, we do have to have it dry in order to put our birds on, but we could put the splatter on after the birds. I think we'll put it on after because the bird, the um, flowers are supposed to have a little bit of that splatter on it. So what we want to do right now is if you've got a hair dryer, whatever you've got, dry this a bit so we can start to draw our birds and our branches on here. We're going to start with the branch. So you can use your hair dryer if you've got one. Try to always have one available, even if you're painting with other people, because it's quicker to dry everything. I don't I'm own one. Dryers right here. And I am going to dry this. You guys all have one? I don't own one. I do. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? I don't own a hair dryer. You don't own a hair dryer? Nope. The Salvation Army, pick one up for five bucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. No, I mean, it, you know, to add to your art materials, right? It's not necessary, but it helps. It hurries it. Yeah, it, it oh. helps. Like I said, it isn't something that you have to have. I'm just going to dry this a little so then I can paint on top of it right away. The other good thing about a hair dryer is that when you're doing paint pours, um, it's good to have a, a dryer or some sort of heat gun, a, a hair dryer, a, um, one of those flaming things. Those are always good to have when you're doing a paint pour. How does mine look? Do I need more? Oh, beautiful. Wow. Is that good? I like that. It almost looks, oh, I can almost see an entirely different painting in that one, huh? <laughs> oh, it looks, to me it looks like you could have like tr a, a few trees and a park bench and a and a walkway <laughs> and that <laughs> that's what i'm seeing when i saw that walking in the rain so i need more dark blue in it or is, is that good no let me see it once more i was just so busy seeing another picture in it that i no i don't think you want any more dark blue i think that looks good now how much close to the edge do you need it? Like all the way? Yeah. And then if is that a canvas you're using or is that a yeah, yeah it's canvas? What you want to do, Karen, is if you're using a sponge or a brush, go all along the edges now. Make sure the edges on the you know that wrap around, make mm -hmm. sure they're all painted also that blue. Okay. The dark blue if you have it. And just just take it like this, Karen, and just dab. Put a little bit on your sponge and just dab right across. And okay. do it all so that uh, no matter how you're looking at your painting, when you come into a room, if it's hanging, you won't see the sides white. Okay. So we're going to work on, we're going to create the branch first. So if you have a Sharpie, which I asked you to try to have available again, try to have some Sharpies in your, and chalk and a pencil. Those are things you need in your little kit of all your supplies. So Sharpies 
and have more than one because if it runs out and you're halfway through something, you'll be aggravated with yourself. So a few Sharpies, a pencil, and some white chalk is always good to have. And in fact, you, if you want to get some colored chalk, that works too because if you're, if you're drawing right on a white canvas, you need color. Okay, so we're just going to do this kind of squiggly branch that goes across the entire canvas. And that's what your birds are going to be on. So you are going to, no, I think you can see me. We're going to start up a ways up, about a third of the way up on your painting. And we're going to come down. And we're going to go over a little bit. And then we're going to scoop down. I'll draw it and then you can follow afterwards. And I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. So I don't know if you can see very well there, but I started over here about a third of the way down your painting. You start out and you scoop down, you go across, you scoop down some more, a big scoop down, and then you just come up about a third of the way up and you end it over on that side of the canvas. Maybe I can try to make it a little darker so you can see it better. Yeah, I'm getting it darker for you. Now you're going to paint this. So if it's not a full line, as long as you can see where it is, you're good. Or if it's not straight and you kind of went a little crooked, that's okay too. So now I'm going to hold. That almost looks like you're doing a, a mountain. Hmm, that could be a mountain, couldn't it? Right there. And this, and there's a valley, and this could be like the moon or the, uh, I'm seeing all kinds of pictures tonight. <laughs> so you see how that looks, right? Just start up here, scoop down, go up across, scoop right down and up. That's your branch where your birds are going to be. Now, if you did the traceables, you've got two birds. One is going to be looking, the one on the left-hand side is going to be looking towards the center, so towards the right. And the one underneath of him is going to be on a branch looking up a little bit at him, at the one, in where the scoop comes down. So if you see this, this is how we want it to be. One's going to be up here. Now, you're not going to draw him directly on the branch because his little feet have to come out. You got to leave room for his feet to be holding on to the branch. So you got to leave a little bit of room. And the same with this little chickadee over here. It's got to be a little bit of room for the feet. So it would be something like that idea. See how that looks? Once you've placed them, now if you don't have the traceables, look carefully at the picture. I'm going to trace mine and I'm going to hold it up also so you can take a look at what I've done and you can follow it. This will not be difficult. This is not a hard bird to draw at all. So I'm going to trace it now and then I will hold it up. But seriously, it's it's just like a little bird that you would have learned how to draw when you were young in school. It's not a hard one. It's what we do with the inside when we're putting all the pretty colors in that's going to make it so pretty. I might have to turn my light up a bit so it's a little bit brighter for you. So 
I got that guy drawn. Okay, let me turn the light up. And now, so this one's looking up a little bit, and this one's looking down. I'm going to do his little feet. What are you drawing it with? Um, a Sharpie. These Sharpies are, seriously, I just told you to make sure yours works and mine are old and they're not working as well as they should. Is there anything else you can use? Like, I don't want to start drawing and then mess it up and... You can use a pencil. Okay, so you don't have a tracer, right? Right. You can use a pencil or you can use, do you have chalk? No. Do you have a pencil? I have a pencil. <laughs> Okay, so don't do it, uh, don't press real hard on your pencil. It's the only thing I say to you, okay. because a pencil will leave indentation. and You don't want it to be deep. You're going to cover it with paint, but if you press hard on your pencil, no matter how much you use your paint, it it can still show that you so did it with pencil. Just so if you see how I just did that guy, um, I'm going to do the other one, and then you can look closely at this. So let me just get this guy drawn. You just want him to have like a fat little tummy. Why is it okay to say that about birds and babies? But when we say it about ourselves, we get mad. <laughs> oh, I have a fat little tummy. <laughs> but can we say it about babies and birds? Yeah. Put a fat little tummy on them. Okay, so now I'm going to hold it up for you to look at. So this guy here is where your branch scoops down. You don't put his body right on the branch because you need to have some room for little legs. Really simple. Little beak. Pointing up just a slight amount, then his little head. You don't come down too much. His back goes out a bit. His little tail pointing upward. And then you pull it down. If it's easier for you, you can go back to that beak. Bring the point and then make a chubby little belly. And then bring it up to meet the tail. And then okay and the other one is the same only facing the other ways very similar shape And then you just put the two little legs out. You don't have to get extravagant with it. <clears throat> so you're doing okay with that, Karen? You got them drawn? Still working on it? I don't have anything drawn yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Deb, what about you? Yep. You're okay. All right. I am. In fact, I went ahead with a paint. Oh, okay. Go ahead. 
Um, I couldn't see it with my marker, so I just put it there so I can see it. It's okay. I'm, I'm just afraid to draw it. <laughs> oh. Got to jump in. <laughs> okay. um, here's mine already. Oh, good. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, you did. You got it all going already. Freehand. Perfect. So now yeah. if you want to. It really has a tail. <laughs> yeah. If you want to pick some colors, do you, if you want them to be the colors that, of the birds that are there, then yeah. you've got your um, dark is that, like a, is that like a green on the bird? Yeah, you can have a green. You can mix blue with yellow because you're going to put yellow in that bird anyway. All you right. can make a little turquoise of a color. So the blue with a little bit of yellow mixed in it, you're going to take a little blue, the darker blue, move it off to the side and mix some yellow and make some nice turquoise, unless you've got turquoise. Can you show the left That's side, the left green. side? You're going to make your bird really colorful. That's the beautiful part of this painting is the colorful birds. So you want to do whatever color you're going to make your bird, make them bright and colorful and cheerful. Can you show more of the left bird for me, please? I think the yellow, the blues, and the greens, and the little turquoise mixed in there, I think that's a really nice color for these birds because of the background. Yeah. But you might choose to have red birds or whatever, you, you, or maybe just yellow. But I like the way they're colored here. Okay. And then I have some birdie paintings in my... Are you done there, Karen? Can I see the um, the right bird? My bathroom's got four or five paintings of birds in it. I got carried away. <laughs> Almost done. Okay. All right. So I am going to put some colors on my tray, the colors that I want my birds to be. So I'm going to put a nice yellow. So I definitely want yellow in there. You got your colors on your tray, Deb? Yeah, I'm started. Okay. Yep. I mixed blue with yellow. And you made it a turquoise color? It's kind of like a greenish blue. It's kind of cute. So we're just going to make some nice colors that'll look good together. Just put them out on your tray and then you can just work with it creating like I can't tell you if your bird is right or wrong, right? That's your bird and you're going to do it the way you want. It's your bird and you'll do what you want. <laughs> and you do what you want. Yeah. So it's um, my party and I'll join if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting some different colors on my tray. I'm sorry, what colors? Um, yellow for sure. Okay. Um, a green. If you have a light green and a dark green, that's good. Otherwise, you can mix. You can take a little bit of, of blue, like the blue you used for your background, your darker blue. Just a teeny little drop. And then you, you're going to mix a little yellow in with it, and you're going to make a nice color to that. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm getting a, a brush that I can mix it with. So I've got this brush here would work good just to mix, right? So here's where I've got green and yellow and this other color green. And I put some blue over here, a darker blue. So I'm going to grab some yellow. And I'm going to put the yellow over here. Put some more. Grabbing the yellow. I'm putting it right there, okay? See that? This is just in case no one's ever mixed before. Now, I'm dipping in that blue. Do you see that little dinky bit? 
I just took a drop. See that? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to mix it in there with this little bit of yellow. I'm not going to go all over the tray. I'm going to try to stay in one spot and mix. And I'm creating a nice color there. Green. See what's happening? So I created that color. Now, I have a lot of yellow on my brush, so I can actually put more yellow there and keep stirring it. If I want it to be even lighter color, I can go in and get a little more yellow and mix it up. So you can create your own little colors there. And these are going to be feathers. So when you're putting them on your bird, uh, they don't have to be just a straight line. They can just be little brush streaks. And the little brush streaks are going to make it look like it's a feather. Mm. So you're going to want to have a cloth available and some water so that you can keep going in and wiping off your brush as you're painting your bird. So I like to start from the top and work down just because I don't like my hand going like this on the canvas and then I smear it. So if I'm going to start on the left-hand side bird, if I'm looking at it, and at the top, I'd be starting at the top of his head. So I'm going to start with a blue because I want the top of his head to be blue. So I've got some blue on a little tiny brush. and. Now, you're going to paint your bird the color you want them to be, but I'm showing you how I'm doing mine. So I'm going to put some dark blue there first, and I'm doing some little streaks, and I'm going to bring it down. <clears throat> and then I'm going to bring him right down a bit. And I'm going to bring a little bit more. So you see how I'm doing that. Mother. Like that. And then I'm going to wipe off my, well, you know what? Maybe I want a little bit of dark underneath of him too. So I'm going to put a little dark on the bottom side of the bird on the left, just a little. Like that. I'm going to just rinse off my brush a bit because I've got that very dark blue on it. And I'm going to just tap it on the cloth so it's rinsed off. And I'm going to dip in the yellow now. And I'm going to put some yellow around his face, going a little bit towards his beak. So I'm mixing different colors there, and I'm going to make his um, some of his wing green here. So are you wing. filling in between the, the two blues? You're filling in with yellow? Yeah, I'm doing the yellows and greens and any color you want to do. We're just going to give him some nice feathers there. And once, so, okay, so right now I'm doing a lot of green. But once that dries in a few seconds, I'm going to throw some yellow in there too. So it isn't just going to be green. I 
I'm going to give them some different colors. I think I got to stop touching it. Well, sometimes that happens. We start touching and then we get carried away. And then we do too much. So I'm putting some light. You see over. how your picture, you've got like a black underside, like a shadow. Right. So I, I did that on my bird and I'm not, I don't like it. We'll just leave okay, it. We'll wait till it dries. Just wait. Yep. I'm going to wait. Yeah. As soon as it's dry or go dry it. Oh, you don't have a dryer. Because as soon as it's dry, just go in there and cover it up. That's what I think. I'll leave it for now and let's see what it looks like. My so it looks I'm like um, some feathers, so we'll leave it alone. Yeah. So I'm just adding some different colors. I'm going to put some blue back in there in a minute and maybe even a little red. So I'm waiting for that to dry a little. And I'll be doing some more yellow once it's dry. So put some yellow down here on the bottom. And sometimes if you want to put the yellow on top of like the green or the blue, you don't press too hard. You just kind of touch it and it'll give it a little bit more of a feathery look. If you're pressing real hard, it'll look more like a streak instead of a feather. So just gently run your brush through there. Talking about birds, my birds are saying hello. Is that the love birds? Yeah, yeah there's there's uh, six, five of them. They're doing really well. Good. Yeah, they're so cute. Oh my goodness, we like them. <laughs> I got to come see them. Yes, you do. Anytime you want to come. Well, I'm coming next week to get your paintings. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to you're going to have a few of them yourself, aren't you? Or just one? Yep, I've got uh, three. I'm going to make another one this week. OK, I'll probably have at least that many, too. Because, you know, I have some that are already completed. Yeah. And they're just sitting here. So why am, are they sitting here when they can bless somebody? And you're trying to purge. It's perfect. Yeah. And it's going to be for a good cause. Yep. No, not, right? Win-win. It is. So I'm going to want to have, um, I think I'm going to want some turquoise on my bird. So I, I'm going to actually get some turquoise paint. I'm not just going to use what I made. I want some turquoise paint on can him. I, can and I I'm, make the feather is more lifelike? How do you make it lifelike? Yeah. Okay, wait till it dries a little bit. And then you're going to be able to put some streaks. You need to put different colors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to take a small brush, a smaller brush than probably what you're working with. How big is your brush? Oh, it is small. Okay. So you're just going to want to use the tip and put some uh, other colors. Do you see what I'm doing there? And I'm very gently touching it. I'm hardly pressing at all. Like the background, I pressed harder to get the colors in. But when I want it to look like a feather, I'm using a faster streak with my hand okay. like that mm -hmm. and very lightly touching. I'm not pressing at all. I think a little teeny bit of that red or purple that you brought with yourself, with uh, with you that I asked you to have, would be nice to put a little bit of that in, um, maybe under his neck, different spots, and um, some turquoise would be good, maybe a little purple or maybe a little white, whatever you want to put in your bird. White always looks good also. Okay. Just to put a couple little streaks of white because the white gives it a sheen. It makes it look like it's um, highlighted. So I'm going to. Did take you also a, do the dark it. blue on the other bird? Yeah, I'm right now. I've just done some yellow on it. I'm waiting for that to dry. 
I'm going to put a little teeny bit of this purpley color that I said I suggested you brought some purple with you. And I'm going to bring it under Give him a little bit of that. You know, you, you may think that's a bit much right now, but as you look at it, you're going to like what you're doing. It just takes a bit to, like the ones I have up in my bathroom, I actually the other day went in there and said, you know what, that bird is too fat. I didn't like the way he was looking. Mm -hmm. So I just took it down and put some more branch underneath of his stomach so it thinned him out a bit. Wish we could do that in real life. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put a little bit of this here, a little bit of that here. So I'm I'm just putting a few little pink streaks, the pink purple, pink. whatever this is, on his feathers also just to brighten him up a little bit. And um, the other bird has some of that pinky color over here. We're gonna put kind of a reddish purple. Put a little bit there. And just play around with it. You can make it however you see it. So I really want some turquoise. I'm just gonna get my turquoise that's right here next to me. For some reason I can see turquoise in there. The, my birds have these really pretty color blues on them, turquoise and blue, the lovebirds. I know I got some here. Get what you wanted? Okay. Yes? Okay. That's not more important. Yeah. But I still grab. I think we lost Margaret. Yeah, I was just going to say, where'd Margaret go? Well, her daughter was talking, and maybe she thought it was too noisy for us. So this isn't really turquoise. It's an aqua green, but I couldn't find my turquoise, and I don't want to go downstairs. So I take a little aqua green, and I'm going to put a little bit of that on the bird. Maybe over here. And all I'm doing, I like it. I'm leaving a lot of paint on my brush. So when I put it on, you can actually see it's rised up. Do you see that? That turquoisey stuff. But when it dries, it'll have a little bit of a pattern, but it just gives it more of that feathery look. I'm going to put some of this on the bird on the right also, some of this kind of bluish turquoise color. And then I'll put some other colors in there too. And what I like about these paintings is and nobody can say, well, that doesn't look like a bird. Like, how do they know? It looks like the bird I want it to look like. Right? Maybe this bird flew up and landed on my branch on my tree out there. Nobody knows. So all I'm doing is putting some turquoise on here now. And then I'll probably put some other colors in with it. Just blend your colors. Psst. 
So Karen, what I just did here was I have a brush about the size that you're using and I just put a little bit of that green that I was using, that turquoise thing, and I added a drop of white. And then I did small streaks. Do you see those? It's little tiny streaks in it. So it kind of appears like feathers. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Just little tiny streaks. So I just put my brush on there with the greenish white on it. And I just brought it down like that, a quick little streak. And I didn't press hard. Don't press hard. Because when you press hard, that's what you're going to get. It's just it's going to look like you pressed hard. It's not going to look like a feather. And this little guy, he, he's got lots of yellow on him, so we want to bring some yellow on him. And I'm very lightly touching it and bringing my brush out, lifting it up, touching down and lifting up quickly, quickly like that. Touch down and lift, down and lift. And it gives that look that could look like a feather. And make sure you have lots of paint on your brush to do that. And his feathers don't have to stay straight in those lines that you drew. The feathers can be kind of settling outside of the line a little bit. Because okay. if you look at a bird, if you were looking at my birds right now, their feathers aren't totally lined up inside of a, a line around their body. Some of them are poking out a little. And that makes it look a little bit more realistic. And we want to um, just give a nice little look, put some white in there. And sometimes some of their feathers underneath stick out a little bit and then you can see like a white or a different color under their feathers so you can feel free to do a little bit of that And these guys do have some of that reddish purple color on them. So make sure you put a little bit of that in. And you can draw his tail out longer if you'd like. Why is this coming on? It's asking me something. Okay. That was weird. So like I said, you can make his feathers, like his um, tail, you can make it a little teeny bit longer than what you drew in originally. Give him a nice long tail. And just take your brush, fast, 
light, fast streak, streaks or strokes, whatever you want to call those, light and fast. And you're going to want to um, put an eye in there too. Once you've got it all dry there, you're going to put a little eye. So around his face, I want a little bit more white up here, just a couple of little streaks. Give it that feathery look. Not much. So the yellow I'm using is, is a really weird yellow and it's not doing really what I want it to do. Um, sometimes when you get this more expensive paint, it's, it's too thick. Like if you look here, it's so thick. And when you put it on, it's almost like using an oil paint. It's, it's not doing exactly what I want. So sometimes you really are better off sometimes with this paint like dollar store paint seriously sometimes you are so I'm gonna to try to put some more yellow around his face and it's giving me a lot of trouble here so I'm trying to dab it in instead of um, painting it on I'm just dabbing to try to because I want around his face to have quite a bit of yellow that's the guy on the right, if we're looking at it. I'm having a difficult time getting this paint to really just show up the way I want it to. So you just have to play around. Maybe that's a little bit better. What if you put the bird a little bit too high off the branch? You're going to make the branch thicker. Can I see what you mean? Um, it's the one on the left. Okay. Well, your branch is going to get thicker. Okay. What we did was we drew it on, but we're going to paint it in a few minutes. Okay. We start at the top and we work down. If we would have done the branch first, it would have been smearing. See how my hand's going? So mm -hmm. if I was painting, this would be smearing. So we'll do the branch last. And you can make it as thick as you want. Good. It's not necessarily a skinny little branch like that. That was just to um, help us to know where we were putting our birds. Okay. Okay. So I think, again, I want a little bit more of that reddish color and we're going to be using that color anyways that pinky red purple whatever you pulled out to use we're going to use some of that for the flowers anyway so i'm going to put some more on my tray and i'm going to use some of that to put a little of that color on my bird like under his chest because the color that i did use i don't feel was bright enough so I'm doing a little bit more lighter pinky color. 
under there. You know, you might not like that yourself, so that's up to you. It's just to give me some... That's pretty. Yeah, you don't even know what you're doing. You just play with it, and then it comes out. And like I said, who can tell you that your bird isn't accurate? Oh, this is the way my bird looks. Sorry. <laughs> That's the difference of when we're trying to do a portrait and when we're doing something like this where we can do whatever we want to do. I'm going to put an eye on him so it looks a little more. Sometimes when you put the eye in, it starts to look even more real to you. So these eyes aren't necessarily dots. And you can do a dot or you can just make a little streak. Oh, dear, my brush is wet. That's not good. Hang on. My brush had water on it. That wasn't a good thing. Okay. I don't know why it's doing this. The heck? like my brush is wet in water but it's not but that's how the paint's coming out I have to wait for that to dry now but I'm going to put an eye over here on this guy too I'm also going to give his beak a little tiny bit of a yellowy orange color so i'm just going to take my pink or red or whatever you color you got on there and i'm going to mix i'm going to move it off to the side a little bit of it and i'm going to take some yellow and i'm going to mix it in with that and i'm going to make a okay, as much of an orangish color i can make or i could just go get some orange but this is making a nice orange so I've just mixed this pink with some yellow and I've made kind of a orangey color. And I don't need much. I'm only going to touch the beak a little so that it stands out from the rest of his body. So I'm going to just go along his beak with this kind of orangey color here. So do you see what I just did with his beak? I just took a little teeny bit of this color that I mixed. And it's, it's good to mix colors because then you've got originality. The only thing I suggest is if you're going to be doing a large area make sure you mix enough paint because if you were to let's say i just did this little bit but i needed it way more than that now i have to try to remix another that color to match it so karen you were off but all i did was you see how i made their beaks a little teeny bit different color what i did was i took some of the pink or if you have red whatever you've got on your tray and i took a glob of yellow i glob of pink and I set it over here separate okay. from the other colors and then I took a glob of yellow and I just kept dabbing it in there and then I created that color whatever that color is it's almost like an orangey tan mm -hmm. and that's what I used to do the beak now if you want you can do his feet like that some of them have like a colored color on their feet so I might do a little of that color on his feet what if the pink I have is too bright? How do I dull that down a little bit? Too bright? Yeah, I have. Um, yeah. And what do you want? Now you want to put that on his chest first? Yeah. 
Yes. You, you can um you can add a little bit of like if it's too dark pink, you can add a little bit of white. If it's too bright, I don't know. Try putting a, a like a little drop of like move some of the pink over a little bit on another spot of the tray and then dip a little white in your brush and stir and see if you can come up with a color that you like. Maybe I actually... You don't want his little feet to be too wide, too uh, thick. Then that doesn't look right. You want his feet to be just a nice thin size. So when you look at your birds, you'll know if you want to add more color to them. You'll take a look at them and you'll say, oh, I think it needs more blue or I think it needs a little touch of red up there or maybe a dark blue or a teal blue. Teal is often in the feathers of birds. So you may want to take some teal or if you have some. Or you, you might look at this later. I think Deb's done that before where he'll, she'll look at her panties and a little bit later she'll she'll add something to it and and that's fine that's good that's just saying you know i i worked on it for an hour and a half in a class but now i think i want to add a little more to it and adding little drops of white little bits of black that that all helps with um the look of your bird I'm going to try the eye on this bird again. I don't know what happened with that paint, but it certainly didn't work very well here before. No, still not. I might have to just paint that in and start again. I don't know. So if you find paint, like I've got that yellow and this big glob of it on my tray but this is the second or third time that I've tried to use the, this yellow and I don't like it so it's basics this is it liquid x it's a good paint and it's can um cadmium yellow it's it's a actually good paint that artists use but for some reason I'm not liking it. So my best bet would be is to get rid of it, throw it away. <laughs> but I'm cheap and I don't want to do that. But then every time I put it on my tray and I try to paint with it, I get frustrated. So what's the sense of really having it, right? We have to learn to let things go. Let go, Deborah. Breathe and let go. Um, let it go. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. So if, if you'd like now, you can let the birds dry a little bit. You might want to come back to that later. And you can work on some flowers. So flowers are really simple. You know, some of you have done flowers with me before. They're not hard to do. You should look for a brush that's a squared brush will make it easier. See, that's like a square top. And you can get these brushes at the dollar store. You don't have to go out and spend a million dollars on brushes. Okay. So something with a squared top would probably be good. Or depending on, you can use an, a, one with an angled top. See how it's angled up there? Yep, that's okay. That's good. That one's good. And you're going to want to choose your colors for your flowers. So you do want purple flowers. Do you want... Red flowers, what color do you want? And we're going to take a look at that. And then we're going to put some paint on our tray.
So I put a good amount of paint on this brush. See? And you can do these flowers different ways. I'm going to do it the easy way. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my brush, it's full of paint, and I'm going to, I'll show you on something else first. So there's a few ways to do them. You can also mix colors. I'm going to do it on here so you can see it. So you take your brush and you go straight at your canvas, wherever you're going to put your flower. I have lots of paint on the end of the brush, and I'm just going to touch where the flower is going, and I'm going to push down. Do you see what I did? I just touched, and I pushed down. Now I'm going to go next to it, touch, push down. Do you see how I'm doing that? Now I'm going to get some more color. Touch, push down, push down, and over there. So now I've made kind of like a star, a flower, however you want to do it. And then when I'm ready, when it's all ready, whatever color I want to make the center, I put on the back of my brush. There's my brush. There's the handle. And I just push that in the middle. And there's the center of the flower. And there's the flower. You can make more than those petals. You can make a few more petals if you want. Whatever you want to do there. You can put six petals, five petals. Another way of doing it is mixing colors. And I'll show you that. So I put a few colors on this brush now on the end of my brush. And I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, my God, lots of colors on there. So I'm going to push. See what happened? Do you see that? Whoops, no, you didn't. See? So now that petal has lots of colors in it. Push. Kind of looks like a peony. And I'm just pushing. Now I'm holding this up in the air and I'm not really concentrating on what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to show you how you can put numerous colors on your brush with the same idea. Just touch, push, and there's a petal. Touch, push, petal. You can also draw petals. That's fine. If you want to take your time and you get a small little brush and you can draw, and I'll show you that. Take a before, small brush. Where are we putting these flowers? Um, I'll show you in a second. So you can draw. Let me just show you. You can draw a petal like. You see how I drew that? Mm -hmm. So you can also do it that way. You can do it kind of funky, or you can actually draw it and then fill it in and put your multiple colors and then your little dot in the middle from the back of your brush, remember. And there you got a nice little flower. So mm -hmm. there, these flowers are just really whimsical and easy. So you're going to do one in between the birdies, right about there, down here. And then we're going to do a little bunch of them right here, over by this bird here at the end, the one on the right-hand side. You can do a bunch of flowers in there. And then a bunch of flowers all up and through here. Okay. Okay. Now, what I didn't tell you was we probably should paint the branch. <laughs> so, you can paint it brown. You can paint it black. You can, because we're going to add um, a little color to it. So, whatever color you want to make your branch. You don't want the branch too thick. Because if it's too thick... Now it's going to overpower the beauty of the birds, and you don't want that. So Is that an okay-looking flower or too small? That's okay. You might That one there, you'd probably want a little bigger. 
Okay. Can you make it a little teeny bit bigger? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to get a little brown here. And I'm going to make my branch. Not going to make it a lot thicker than it is already. But I'm just going to. All I'm doing is making this brown branch, and you can make it black, whatever color you want. You can make it thicker. Don't don't remember a branch. I mean, don't forget. Don't remember that a branch is never a straight old branch. They're all bumpy, lumpy, and little things coming off of them, and little stems. They're not just a straight line. So I put that branch there, if you see, I'm going to bring a little bit of what's on my brush down. So I'm going to follow my branch and I'm just going to lightly put a little streak coming down right there. You see, if you just look up for a minute, girls, I just put a streak. So it's a little tiny branch coming off of the big branch. You should do a few of those. In different spots, you don't need very many, but just a couple to make it look more realistic. Maybe off here to the end where it's going off to the edge of the paper, or off the edge of the canvas. You run your brush on the branch that you've already got, and then you kind of veer off to the right or left just a teeny bit and pull out quickly, and it will make a little branch. See what happened there? I made a little teeny branch. All that's doing is making it look a little more real. I'm doing a few of those on here. Just lightly pulling them off. And I think I'll do one up here. There we go. So now that branch looks more like a branch. It's got little things coming off of it. And when it's dry, if that black shows through from the marker, good. Let it show through. If it doesn't, you might want to put a little black or a little teeny but white going through it. And I'll show you in a few seconds when it's dry. So once you've got that done, then you can work on your flowers. We're going to do some splatters later, but we're going to work on these flowers now. So let's get some of those done. What colors do I want? White. I'm going to try to get my flowers to be a little bit on the white and pink side. So I've got my pink on my brush and I'm dabbing in some white and I'm just going to do a little flower here down. And then I'm going to make sure that I put an, a center inside my flower. And I'm going to put some other flowers on the right hand side and the left hand side. They can be different sizes. They don't have to all be the exact same size. Some are growing. Some have already grown and they're ready to fall off. Use your imagination.
put as many as you want. You don't have to have tons. Whatever you think looks pretty. If you want, you can put some greenery around it. Like this, this is all, now you're doing your own thing, right? I've, I've led you. Now you just do what you feel. Flowers don't have to be up against a branch. They can look like they're in mid air, but the eye sees it as if it's on a branch. So as many as you want, just kind of even it off some on both sides. Again, if you want to put a little green, the original doesn't have any greens going around the flowers, but if you see that in your mind's eye, do it. You would use a small brush, put a little green around the flower. But as I said, that's not necessary, whatever you see. I'm going to try it just so I can show you. Deb? Yep. Oh, very cute. I like your little birdies. Yeah, and I love the flowers. They're just kind of tiny, like little buds. They're beautiful. The tails are beautiful. They're perfect. I put strokes on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what's good. Really um, I want to touch up the top of it. It doesn't really look round, but I think I should stop touching it. If you touch too much, that's the whole thing. Your birds look really pretty. You, you might want to later take a little dinky brush and add a couple little strokes here and there, but you know you don't want to get carried away because then you'll never get back what you've got. So if you, if you like something and you say, oh, well, I think I'll just add a little bit, and then you might not have that look again. You'll have a new one, and that's okay. I'm I'm upset. My blue is too dark, so everything looks dark. I should have had a lighter blue. Well, you could have. Um, it's a very dark painting. You, you could make flowers. So why don't you take your branch and add a little bit of white streaks through it, just teeny, teeny, teeny. Um, okay. You could also, <clears throat> under your birds, where you have it really dark, you know how their bellies are dark? Yes. You could lighten that. Okay. I, I think, think that would take away, if you lightened that, that will take away from the darkness. It will. Uh-huh. I think that's what you need to do. Oh, it's up to you. But if you want to brighten it up, you see, I had dark under them, and then I lightened under the tummies. Yeah. I took some blue and then I stroke a little bit of white in there. And, you know, you can see right there, I didn't put much white. There was just a couple little, little, little streaks of white, but then it took away from the darkness. Let's try and I'll show you what I mean about, let me just put this little bit of green here because I want to put some green around the flowers. Okay. So when you're doing this white thing that I was talking about, 
you put a little bit of white on your brush, really tiny amount. And where your um, branches are, you can just put a couple little streaks. Now, if you look what I'm doing, and right now it might look dumb, but wait till it's done and I'll show you. So you see the difference? Take a look at the branch. See that branch? Yeah. See that branch? Yes. So do you see it, it just makes it more alive and it takes away from the total dark brown. You see that? Yes. So if you like something like that, all you do, Deb, is a little brush with a little teeny bit of paint and just do a few streaks here and there. Just a couple. And I do that a lot of times once I'm done with my paintings. And I'll have extra paint sitting around, right? And then I'll just go, oh, I think I'm going to add a little something there. So that all I did was teeny, teeny bits there. But it took away from it. And then I honestly think if you were to take your bird's bellies and just do something like that under their bellies. Yeah, I'll do and, that too. Yeah, and then their feet, maybe instead of being black, put a little dinky bit of tan in with it or brown instead of black. Okay. That's what I did here with these guys. Their feet were black, and then I just added the color I put on their beak, I put on their feet. And again, it it made it more, it made it brighter. As far as the background in here, can I just see yours for a minute so I can see how, how there's space in the middle between the birds? Are you still painting? Who are you talking to? You. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I tried two things. I put some. All right, see, right there, the that changed it. And. Okay, okay good. Now do so a the little. The branch bit. looks better, right? Yes, it does. And do a little bit, a little lightness on that darker color under their stomach. Yes. Give it. So you have kind of like a royal blue or whatever that is. or um... It's black and purple. Okay. So it's take. Too dark, you can't see it. Yeah. Take something lighter, even if it's a little bit of. Um, of a of a greeny turquoise or a little bit of uh, purpley pink, like a lighter color, and just put a few streaks in there, like feathers, and it's going to change entirely what you see. Okay, thanks. And really light, okay, Deb. Don't press hard. How's yours, Karen? So, what if your birds are spaced too far apart? Does that matter? No, no. They're just spaced um, out. We <laughs> <No. laughs> got into some weed, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I'm going to go back in later and retouch the birds, but. No, that's pretty. They don't have to be on top of each other. Then you're going to have baby birds. <laughs> um, no, that's good. That's good. Uh, one thing that you could do, but I don't know if you'd have the guts to do it. <laughs> Okay. Bird flying down, coming to land there on the on the branch in between them. How would I do that? <laughs> I can I can draw it for you, and then you can look at it, and and I can send it to you. But I'm just thinking of like a bird coming in, like because with my birds, that's what they're always doing. So if there's a couple like this, one would be flying in to come and land in there. So there's enough space there in the middle in the top. There is. There is. I love that. Or you know somebody something fl just flying in to come into it, or even one sitting there. But if if you could do like if here's the painting, you could have a bird flying in from up here somewhere. Yeah. He won't really be down here, but it'll you'll know that that's where he's going. Mm -hmm. You could try that. I like that. Good idea. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll draw it and then I'll I'll text it over or I'll me I'll send it on your messenger. Oh, Thank you. Much that's better. It. Is it looking better, Dan? Wow. So I used a little gold in the underbelly. Oh, there you go. What a difference. 
<laughs> See? And I redid the um, the feet. Yeah. Totally changed it. Not that it wasn't pretty already, but you were, you were right. It was dark. I don't like the branch. I'm going to try and blend it in some more. Okay. Oh, I love your branch. I was... I know. I think it's nice, too. I'm going to make mine a little bit thicker, I think. Yeah, sometimes we look at things and we don't like them and other people are like, oh, I love it. Don't change it. <laughs> but I'm like that with this yellow. This yellow color is driving me crazy. I got to throw it away. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Because it's this is the second or third time this has done this where it's not showing up the way I want it to. I'm going to try a little bit more. But So, yeah, so I think we're probably done just gonna try to put a little more yellow here there we go i'm also going to go back and watch the video and and um put some more definition back into the birds okay hi well i'll have the video up and running once we're done i just have to save it and and get it on there so I just threw it. What's that, Tom? I like it. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad. I just threw in a couple more yellow little feathers right there. And that stuff, you like, see right here, I think there has to be something right there. I think it's too dark. So I'd like to get some yellow, but this yellow is not cooperating. Like I'm more of a cheek there. Yeah. Something needs to be done there. Use a different yellow. Or, or even like um, a red little cheek, red cheek wouldn't be bad, like a really red cheek, right? Because mm -hmm. my, my um, Conyer, he's got red cheeks, red and green. Well, anyways, the yellow is coming up a little bit now. Mm. Not too bad. It'll do. <laughs> there we go so make sure you take pictures and you send them to me because I like to show everybody what you've done oh your speckles if you want to do speckles like we've got on the original here I would suggest with this painting you don't want it there's a number of ways I'll show you now you put a whole bunch of paint on a brush not a whole bunch but you got to paint on a bigger brush see you dip it in the paint, you bring it up. So you're going to do white. You got white, you got some pink colors in there. So start with it white. You, this brush is full of some white paint, pretend. And then you take another brush or a Sharpie or whatever, you hold it over the painting and you hit it towards the edge of the paint of the brush. See where the edge is? And you just hit. And if I'm doing that, It'll splatter as long as you don't have tons of paint on there. Because if you do that with tons of paint, now you're going to have globs. <laughs> you're not going to have little splatters. The best way to do it is take a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Dip it in the paint. Hold the toothbrush. you got your painting up. You hold the toothbrush in your hand like this. You put your thumb on the toothbrush. You point it towards the painting and you... Run your thumb back on the toothbrush. So if this was the toothbrush here, my thumb would be here, and I'd put my thumb and nail right in there, and I would pull back. Like I'd paint, point it at my painting, and I'd be pulling back on it. And the bristles will sprinkle little tiny what you see here. If you do it in, yeah, okay. And just carefully maybe even practice it you know get something out like and practice get your thumb used to doing it because you certainly I don't think I've done it before the other way and it works a lot of times really well with a big brush and you tap it but just your luck you might not want globs and instead you tap hard and this big 
globby thing comes out. Mm -hmm. then you got to work along with it. It won't look ugly. It'll look like you planned it there, but it might not be what you really want, right? So toothbrush is the best way to go. So you don't care if you get the splatters on the birds? Um, No, not really. You don't have to. Or just be careful where you're split. With a toothbrush, you can really... See, when you're doing that other thing, you can't direct it. Okay. With a toothbrush, you can be holding your painting and you can direct your toothbrush. I want some right there. I direct it right there and pull back on my brush and it'll splatter. Okay, you can direct where you want it. Another nice thing is if you want to put a little um, uh, glitter glue. I buy that all the time at the dollar store. You can get it in a tube form. And you just squeeze it out. You can either squeeze it and put it on your tray. And then you take your brush and you stick it in the glitter glue. And you've got a bunch of glitter glue on your brush now. And then you just kind of dab it. Dab, 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 dab glitter glue all over. And you got little glitter. The other way you can do it is um, if you feel you're going to be painting a lot, go and buy yourself some spray adhesive it's about six or seven dollars i don't know about in the states it'd be cheaper for you karen maybe for you it'd be six or seven for us it'd be about eight or nine it's a big aerosol it looks like hairspray don't put it in your hair <laughs> it's adhesive <laughs> and then you just take it and wherever you want your glitter so let's say i want the glitter to go all around here that circle -y thing in the middle Mm -hmm. So I would spray my adhesive there and then you count to about five or six and then you've got the shaking glitter that you can buy at the dollar store. Okay. And you just very gently either shake it on like you would a little bit of salt. You wouldn't go crazy like that little or put some in your hand, pick it up with your hand and then sprinkle it. Sprinkle it on. And then a lot of pictures look really pretty with glitter on them. Little bits of glitter. Silver and gold are the best ones to have it if you're going to start collecting things to to have in your craft box. <laughs> um, yeah. So dollar store brushes, glitter, uh, glitter, uh, glitter glue. Yeah, that's about it, really. Oh, and a fan brush. I don't know if you have one, Karen. Like this. Yeah. Okay always important to have good 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 okay all right so i think we're done uh like i said except for doing that little splattering if you want to do it um again what colors to use the splatter the splatter i would use white and maybe a little little drop of pink mix in there maybe a, a tiny bit of yellow you don't need a lot so even if you took a toothbrush and you stuck it in the paint with mostly white, and then you just maybe put a little corner of the toothbrush into the yellow, a little corner in the pink. And then when you're doing that, you'll be getting the different colors going okay. up. Yeah. And like I said, practice if you want to first. Mm -hmm. If you're not used to doing that, at yeah. first it, it can it can be a little bit hard because you might get it all over yourself. You know, you're trying to splatter it and you got the brush turned the wrong way and now you're splattered. <laughs> so, you know, just get used to how to hold the brush and how to splatter. Okay. And, Thank and you very much. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Right. Okay. Good to see everyone. Good yeah, to see you. God too. bless you all. Take care. Over here, I'll get your recording as soon as we can. Okay, everybody. All right. Bye. Love you guys. Love you, Karen. Love you too, honey. All right. Bye, honey.